What is up, everybody? My name is Justin. This is Forever Self Employed. I'm joined with the Core Four. How's it going, you guys? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the things that will keep you broke forever. Uh, we've noticed kind of a recurring theme of uh, stupidity, one might call it, or maybe, you know, we're here to enlighten, essentially. <laughs> so we have some uh, things that we want to talk about today that are keeping you guys broke that you might not even be aware of. And um, we don't want you to be broke. We want you to be successful. And that's why, you know, you're watching our channel and you're here with us. So uh, we're going to jump right into it. Before we do, though, we do want to give a little bit of a, a, a recap of WashCon and talk about the next event that we have coming up. It'll be in the comment section and the description. But, um, Cody, I'm going to let you do the honors, man. It was at your place. So tell us a little yeah. bit about how WashCon went. Yeah, it was great. It was just a few weeks ago, and so we were here for uh, two days. Felt like an eternity. No, nah, I'm here every day, so it doesn't mean, mean anything to me. But uh, everybody traveled into Roanoke somehow. They found their way here, and uh, we did a ton of training. We had a really good group um, on the first day. I kind of feel like everybody was drinking from a fire hose. That was the the glazed look, you know, because there's a lot of information. And then day two was, I thought, was killer with the VIP day. We get to really go into systems and things like that's that's the stuff that I like. Aaron was, you know, over there. He, they didn't want to break away from Aaron because, you know, he's Aaron. So he had the the crowd over there. But uh, we showed I, just simple things, but inner office systems and things like that. So a lot of stuff that may not exactly be pressure washing, but it's more business systems. Mike can probably kind of chime in on that as well. But things that you can integrate that just make life so much better as a business owner. It was a good event. Uh, we've done two and that was my favorite one of the two, me and Aaron have done a bunch of events. And I think that was my favorite out of every, every event we've ever hosted. Right. So, uh, we, we already had somebody in the chat ask, uh, what's up fellas is watch kind of available online for those who can't make it. It will be available, uh, next week. We are going to do a virtual version and, um, I guess we're going to go ahead and tell them about the restructuring for the next event. Y'all cool with that? Yeah. I mean, that's a big announcement. So go ahead and let the cat out of the bag, baby. Come on. Okay. The next event is uh, in 189 days. I believe it's September 8th uh, and 9th. And what it's going to be is it will be a, a VIP only. So we'll have two different VIP days. If you guys want to get the virtual event, if you guys want to see our, our um, talks, essentially, you can get the virtual event. You can watch those. When you get a VIP ticket, you will get the virtual event for free, and you'll be able to come in and sit down with us and, and talk to us and ask us your questions. I think as Cody mentioned we felt like everyone that went actually got the most value out of day two because we were able to sit down, look them in the face, talk to them, answer their questions, and kind of address everyone personally in their business. So we're going to restructure. Uh, you guys will be able to watch the event you know, from the comfort of your own home, make your questions, whatever you got, and then uh, come out and meet us for, for the VIP day. So anybody want to else uh, add on anything to that? <clears throat> yeah, I think that it's really good because we've had a lot of guys just around the globe right who are like i want to come but i i i'm not you know i can't fly in it's it's thousands and thousands of more dollars to come from where they are so we decided to film a wash con film all our presentations like justin's saying and, and package it for you guys to buy wherever you are and like justin said if you get that that uh, if you get the VIP day and you're going to come to the next one and you want to sit down and really talk business systems on the second day, um, you'll get the virtual event for free. So I think, I think it's really going to help out a lot of guys who have wanted to come or the timing's not right. The day's not right. You know, I get it. I have a, I'm a single dad. So if it happened during my time, I probably wouldn't be able to find a babysitter. So for you guys out there who are in similar type situations, whether it's your job or your family, you can get that uh, virtual event and watch the whole thing. Right. Another thing we wanted to do is we had several guys ask us if we could possibly do like, um, you know, two events a year where they could come in and they could sit down and talk to us about their business. And that was one of the reasons why we just wanted to go ahead and do the um, double VIP days because that was honestly the most popular option anyway with regards to the tickets. So uh, now you guys will be able to buy it. Next time we go live, we'll announce it, you know, that it's available to be purchased, the, um, the recording. And yeah, if you guys are interested in that VIP day coming to see us in September, check out. It'll be the first link in the comment section and the description. Uh, Mike, do you want to add anything to uh, WashCon summary? 
Well, no, I, the only thing that I would say is that um, if you guys are interested and you do want to um, go ahead and get notified when the WashCon live uh, virtual event is available, you can email us at info at pwcourse.com and just send a quick email that says, let me know when it's available and we will put you on the email list if you're not already on it. And, uh, and we'll send out an email to everybody and let them know that uh, it is available. Right. I want to say this too. One of the things that we try to do with everything is over deliver. So Marvin just said that he, he got how to wash last night and he was up all night with it. And he's obviously asking us, you know, can he get a wash con as well with every single event that we do with every single course that we put out, we try to give 10 X the value, right? So if you're going to be a thousand dollars for this or whatever the cost is, we are going to try to get that to 10 grand for you. And I would say with the success stories that we've had that have come out of wash con, that's like, you know, <clears throat> Guys would do 200, 300, 400 grand after coming to WashCon. So we've um, got guys who are doing those numbers coming back. Right. Right. They're coming back for a second, a second WashCon. And it's really cool to see because you actually get to watch their development. I mean, I know you guys, I'm, I'm going to speak for you guys for a second, but it's, it, that's why I really enjoy this. This, what we do is because getting to watch the growth and seeing where some of these guys say they come into the inner circle or they come to an event. And then you watch them a year, two years later, and their life is completely changed. They're driving a brand new $100,000 truck. You know what I mean? And it's like they're going on trips because some of them I follow on uh, Facebook. They're going to the beach with their family for a week. And it's just amazing because I actually am them. I've lived that situation, and I knew what kind of – uh, depths or bowels of hell I was in in 2016. So it's cool to see the deliverance happen for a lot of other guys out there as well. Beautiful. So as we mentioned before, I'm going to show you guys the page one more time, but check it out. Two VIP days. Uh, so if anybody wants to come back, you can come hang out with all of us. And um, as Cody mentioned early on, it was just super cool because like Cody was taking people on tours around the shop, showing them like the trucks and how they work and how you pull chemical and do the whole deal. Everybody was gathered around Aaron, kind of going through like all the SEO stuff on, on his computer. Um, and it was just cool to see. Of course, Mike and me, you know, everyone's kind of staying in their seats. But uh, it was just great, man, to kind of be able to talk to you guys and hang out for a little bit. So check out the next WashCon comment section description. Let's go ahead and jump into the topic of today's video. And that's going to be things that will keep you broke forever. Cody, I'm going to let you lead on this, man. And we're going to segue off of that. Well, I sent a I sent a text to the – we got a group chat. Uh, we talk, you know, multiple times every day. And so – I sent this thesis here and I've got it here pulled up so I can reference it, but it's just uh, me and Aaron both growing up in Alabama and really Justin's we're all kind of Southern U S guys. We're Mike's probably the only fancy college man here, but uh, it's just, it's a, it's a characteristic that I've had to work on with myself. And so I, I want to start this off by saying, please understand we get it. But what we're trying to show you is there is a better way to be. It, it's truly a better path. It's just it's going to lead to more financial success if you can adopt this mindset thing. And it's also going to help you with just quality of life, because I found that as I've grown and, and become more successful, that a lot of the things that I used to think were important in the mindset that I had is just a, it's sort of just a default running program in the back of your brain that you have to get rid of. If you want to be super successful, if you want to just make some money, you can keep this. Uh, it's, it's what we call a toe mindset. Aaron coined that term, you know, just talk. I don't know where we came up with that, but Aaron and his brother started calling people. Look at that guy. He's acting like a toe. He looks like a big toe. You can kind of hold your thumb up like, dang, he does look like a toe. Um, but it's a it's a mentality thing. And if you've got it, it's OK. I've got it. It's deep seated from growing up in rural South Alabama where we're. We're in UCLA. We're in the upper corner of lower Alabama. So the demographics here, the average income here, my family wasn't, we weren't in poverty, but, you know, we didn't have a lot and we, we didn't go on vacations maybe every three years or us for us going out to eat was, uh, y'all know what Ryan's is. Does anybody, <laughs> y'all know what, Aaron, you know what Ryan's is? Ryan's Bro Steakhouse, the buffet. Good day. They call that a steakhouse. Yeah. Bro said Western Sizzling. Was, <laughs> yeah, that's like Denny's for lunch, huh? And that was a big, you know, treat for us because my oh no, remember Shoney's? Do y'all sure. remember Shoney's? Look, sing, bro? Don't talk about Shoney's look. <laughs> <laughs> I keep going good. But here's what we've learned, you know, and 
before I started networking with these guys, I really didn't have anybody to bounce this off of. So I, I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm just, you know, looking at it wrong. But no, I'm, I'm actually looking at it correctly. You talk to Mike, talk to Justin, other guys that are successful and even other people, you know, that we're friends and stuff with. But you've got to get this this thinking, this concept out of your mind. So we've got a few points we want to hit on. Number one, number one quality that's going to keep you broke forever is you are cheap. Cheap. Does anybody want to help me uh, talk about cheap for a second? Because I don't want to take the whole uh, the whole topic up. But man, the word cheap to me is uh, it's like a four letter word. I do not want to be a cheapo. So I I I have been um, cheap for a long time, and I am uh, I am the first to admit that being cheap will hold you back in your business. It's, it's, you know, and we see things all the time. People are focused on the wrong things, things that actually don't move the needle. They're, they're looking at the minutia when it's the bigger picture that they should really be, uh, you know, looking at things like, and, and we talk about it a lot, little things being cheap, like, uh, a chemical injector is a great example. A soft wash pump is a great example. A chemical injector is what? 30 bucks, something like that. And I will see guys that will talk about, obviously you want to do your preventative maintenance, right? You want to flush them out. You want to squirt a little WD-40 down there to keep that spring and that ball, you know, nice and, and, and functional. Uh, but I see guys that are taking things apart and trying to rework everything uh, where they're spending so much time and energy on a $30 piece that's costing them way more throw it away, put a new one on and get to work, right? Like it's things like that. A soft wash pump, a pump costs 170 bucks, whatever. It's under $200. Yet that pump is going to make you 10, 15, $20,000 during its lifespan. So when that does go out, don't spend an eternity trying to troubleshoot it and, and wasting time and energy, you know, uh, band-aiding it up replace it, right? That new one is going to make you a tremendous amount of money. That first pump made paid for itself with the first job. And so that's one of the things that I used to, I, I built my own pressure washers with Harbor Freight motors because I was trying to save a couple bucks. Then I would spend time, energy, and money either trying to fix them with parts that aren't existent or replacing them because Harbor Freight had a great warranty and they would replace it. But then it was so much downtime, so much time I was spending, it wasn't worth it. So that's the cheap that I think we're talking about, right? Yeah. Like understand right. and go with the things that actually move the needle. Yeah, I think another example of this too, and th and what we're really referring to, right? We're not telling you to be, you know, a uh, cavalier with your money. We're not telling you to throw your money all over the place. But somebody who is like this, if they didn't get a deal, then they feel like they were taken advantage of, and that's like the quintessential cheap that we're talking about, right? You probably have an uncle or a cousin or somebody that you know that every time they go to order anything or buy something, they're always trying to haggle the price, or they're always talking about how they got such a good deal on this. It's kind. It's it's taking a step back, as Mike mentioned, and as Cody mentioned as well. It's like, dude, right, trying to get deals and everything. Everything's got to be a deal, right? And if you're not careful, you'll start taking pride in the fact that you can haggle, and you're not actually tracking. Did it move the needle for your personal finances? I look at my personal finances the same way, same way I look at the company's P and L. I'm looking at you know. Is it moving the needle for the finances or am I just getting romantic because I can beat the salesman up? Like, well, if I didn't, if I didn't really come out, you know, any better then I'm being a jackass and I didn't get ahead. And I'm, you're just not going to get ahead with that mindset. It's like we have guys that ask us about, you know, how much does bleach cost? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, I'm not. But I'm also like Justin, like you're saying, I'm not saying don't track your bleach number. Every once in a while, if I was out there running a truck, you know, we've got bleach here. But if I was out there running a truck, probably once a year, I'd, I'd just, you know, make a couple of phone calls and check around and make sure that we were in the ballpark for bleach because it will add up over the course of the year. It, it's definitely something to put like a 20 minute phone call per year on, you know, and just, OK, good. We're good to go. And then you keep on plugging away at what moves the needle. But what we see is is the opposite of that. It's like. Well, this guy said that it, their, their bleach was 298 and this guy said that their bleach was 307. And what do you guys think? You know, which one should I go with? I'm like, that's the, what are you talking about? You know, that's that's the cheap that we're talking about. We're not talking about being don't be smart with your money, but don't get so caught up on the on the, the emotional win that you beat somebody up over a few pennies, man. There's no sense in that. It's just like the saying, right? The people that drive around the whole city looking for the cheapest gas. And by the time you find the cheapest gas, you've already spent the whole tank. You know, it's like 
you can't win for losing in that scenario. Aaron, you want to add something to, the, to this point, man? <clears throat> yeah, I'll tell you guys. I'm kind of late to the game on what I'm about to say. Uh, years ago, I, and I'm going to relate it back to what we're talking about, but I was watching uh, The Walking Dead, right? Y'all remember the the hit TV show? I love the show. It's great. But it got boring to me like around season three. And I don't watch Netflix, man. Like I don't watch TV, but I love apocalypse shit. <laughs> and so like it just got me man like if it's like zombies or like you know when the, when the whole government falls apart i'm in right <laughs> um you know ammunition right G keep going so I, I i noticed and i just picked it back up again and i'm i'm watching it a little bit here and there but i equate this what Co to what cody says is that the actual virus that's in the zombies is is within everyone if you know the show, the zombie is inside of you. It just activates, uh, excuse me, the virus is inside of you. It just activates when you die and you turn into a zombie. So this toe mentality, I'm not telling you that it's not within me. Okay. It's already there. I, I know this broke voice that I'm, that we're talking to you about today. I hear it. I do hear it. And it says, Hey, there's cheaper gas up there on, it's about three miles away up there in Nolansville Pike. If you guys know Nolansville Pike around here, you don't want to drive up there. But, hey, it is cheaper. It's cheaper. But then there's this other voice who's who's the me I aspire to be that says, to hell with that gas. I'm going over here, and I'm going to get it. I'm going to pay whatever the price is right up here. Right? I'm not going. I have to physically, mentally, almost like purposefully extinguish that voice all the time. And the only way that I found to do it is to what my name tag is here. It says, write the check. That's the only way I found. And it's to be not cavalier because I write the check heavy in my investments. But that is something that you have to be purposeful about. And, and I just want to make that clear that I'm not without this voice. I'm not holier than thou. Okay. Everyone feels this. But it has, like Cody is saying, are you going to beat the guy? I know how Cody buys trucks, and Cody does not haggle. He'll just, he just pays for it. And it's like, that's kind of how you have to be within your price range. You got to quit haggling for pennies in your life. You, you will be a happier person, and you will make more money. It, it's almost like you finally find peace when you write the check. You finally get some self-esteem for yourself. When you write the check at full price, you pay full price at the counter of success. You take out your credit card like every good entrepreneur and you swipe it. And what happens is this is this is becomes a building process for you. The first time you do it, you're going to feel weird. You're going to feel anxiety because you've been living in this cheap mentality for so long, like my bumpkin cousins, right? You're trying to scrimp every penny. But every time you swipe that card and you pay full price at the counter of success and you do an excellent job, sooner or later, you're aware of the voice, but it's way back here and you know who has that same mentality and you don't ever want to be a part of it anymore. So it's much, much easier, but you have to start the process. I hope I was clear in this oration. <laughs> no, definitely. I do want to touch on one thing. Cody mentioned this at the beginning of the live, but basically this is conditioned. This is conditioned. You know, if you grew up where we grew up, right uh, in the South and maybe not in the most affluent households. It's conditioned into us from an early age that money doesn't grow on trees, right? That I've always heard be cognizant of the sayings that we say every single day. Money doesn't grow on trees. You have to work hard to make money. I had a family member that told me that they would never buy a brand new vehicle ever because of the cost of depreciation whenever you drive it off the lot, right? Like he basically made it seem as if it would be a bad idea to buy, buy a brand new vehicle. But if you make enough money and it's something that you really want, why can you not? If you make enough money, you can do whatever you want. So all of these things are conditioning. I love what you said, Aaron, uh, about being mindful of that voice because at the end of the day, we all have it inside of us. But it's just the ability to monitor it. And when we do hear it, override it. And like you said, over time, that voice does get quieter and you essentially can reprogram yourself, right? And I want to make sure this is clear. Like we're not talking about wasteful spending. We're talking about these are business things that guys need. It's like with quote IQ, bro. I don't, how much is quote IQ? I don't even know. Like I just have it. I don't know how a much dollar a day. Like, come no, on. you know, it's like my initials. No, it's not. You got to stop thinking that way because that's not going to move the needle for you. 
we're not ta- we're not talking about fr- frivolous things, you know. But if you'll do that with things that in your business, if you'll get that mindset in your business, and like Aaron was saying, I had to fight it too, man. But you, what will happen is that you make so much money that it allows you to take it over to your personal life, to your your when we go on vacation, because like my parents and I'm beating up my folks, you know that. We going on vacation, little kid Cody, little tiny beard, you know, little stick figure Cody. And we're like, we're going to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And we're going to eat, you know, a red <laughs> band holiday in. We're going to eat a red. Ba- now, my dad would get a nice place to stay, but he would offset that with we wouldn't eat. You know, it, it props to dad. He took his family on vacation. I appreciate that. He did what he, he did, what he could do within his means. My dad's really not a cheap guy at all, but. He, he was doing the best he could. It's just the mentality that you've got to be aware of. Like you don't want to start down that path because it's, it's hard. Like Justin, you're saying it's, it's like ingrained in you and it's very hard to get off of that train track to where you can free up, you know, your, your time, what you're buying is time. Like I wouldn't care if quote IQ is a hundred dollars a month. Not who, what is that? But I know that I, that the time I bought back with that is so valuable to me. So don't be cheap. Okay. Number two, Mike, you sort of segued into this earlier. You major on the minors. Talk about that a little bit. Your mic, muted, Mike. Mike does not know how to work a mic. <laughs> I do. It's brand new. Um, <laughs> but so, yeah, I think, I think we, we talk about it and we see it. We see this all the time. The questions that we get from people, um, you know, and, and there are probably some guys in here that are, are watching right now that have asked these questions and the questions that don't have an impact on the business, right? Things that, you know, and, and it's, I, I, I don't even really want to talk specifics cause I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but it all goes back to what, what is driving the, the, the important things in your business, right? Um, is it, is it here? I'll, I'll give an example. So, um, one of the guys was out working the other day and he had texted me that he was having trouble with, uh, one of the pumps. Right. And so I, you know, I said, okay, just, you know, keep me updated about an hour and a half later, he called me back and he said, I'm still having problems. I'm fighting it. Um, there's, I think it's an electrical issue and I can't, I can't make it work. And I said, wait a minute. So you've been fighting with us for an hour and a half. And he said, well, yeah, I wanted to be able to, and I was like, your pressure washer and your downstream injector are working. Right. And he's like, it is. And I was like, so after, and they've got a rule, like 20 minutes is the max that I want them to troubleshoot on any specific thing before they either call me or they go to a local place uh, to get it fixed. Um, But like time is of such value and by wasting time on whatever it is, whether it's trying to troubleshoot something for an extended period of time, you're wasting all that possible income that you're earning right so you need to learn where where the things are that move the needle the most and focus on those things and and move away from the things that have zero impact on your bottom line so i don't know if that was where you were trying to guide me cody but um totally okay so those are the things that um no, i'll give you a good example and Duke, mike you're gonna this will be hilarious because me and you are equipment guys like we had a guy call one time. He'd had his, a trailer like a week and he was complaining and he wasn't really complaining, but he was really concerned because the handle on his hose reel was rattling. Mm-hmm. It was like, yeah, I, is it supposed to do that? I was washing and it was like, it has to be able to move so that it can turn. It was just jiggling. Like it's, it's, why would you even think about that? You know, it's like, what, what, why did that penetrate the skull that day? Cause you're not focused on the next job or marketing or, Anything like that, you're worried about a handle jiggling on a hose reel that's gonna jiggle for the next 25 years. Like that's just what it does. Right. My goal is to get guys into a place mentally when it comes to equipment that, like, they maintain it. But I, because I maintain my equipment, I grew up in a auto shop uh, with my dad. I mean, like every he's always asking about the water in my truck and the oil, right? And so that was part of me. But it's like I also don't give a shit if it rots. (laughs) <laughs> I'll buy another one. You see, like, that's the other side of me is like, you know, oh, well, your Mad Max is, is left out in the weather. I don't care. I'll buy, I'll buy a whole nother. I'll buy a whole nother system right now. Today, I'll swipe the car. I don't care. It's going to because here's the beauty about pressure washing. And I posted something recently on socials about this is there was this this tandem. They have this tandem rig. Um, 
of trucks, giant trucks. And they have one truck pulling another truck and it's got this overarching trailer and they got these, it's, each one of these trailer has like eight wheels, you know, probably 16 wheels. Cause it's a dually and they're going up the side of this mountain with this giant engine that I think they were putting in like a mining crane or something. Right. And how they have to transport this. And I, I reposted this and I said, and I have guys saying that pressure washing is expensive to get into. Like really? Like, is that where we are guys? Is that, is that the situation that we're in? Because to get into that guy's business, you better have $2 million minimum just to start. Probably the trailer itself is probably 200, 300,000 because it's a special trailer to pull these crane engines that are, you know, 15 feet long. I mean, it's a giant situation. So you really have to sit above it and stop, stop being so granular. Like Cody is saying, you have to understand that like the machine's going to run. Cody will sit there and every year just throw the pressure washer in the trash and buy another one. And that's not being wasteful. That machine has made a lot of money. It's going, hey, RIP, it's going to its restful place, okay? It's it's done. It's done its work, right? Get rid of it. Get another one. Why? Because keeping the wheels moving on your business and the cash flow is worth so much more exponentially in finances than you tinkering on it because it's broke down in the middle of the day. You really have to understand that that is a catastrophic event on you, that that thing is now broke down and it cannot make money. All right. So that's, that's what we're talking about majoring in the minor things is that would you just one day say, you know what? Hell with that pressure. Go buy another one. Wow. Just that's how my brother operates. Cody, and you it, is, it is so hard, right? It is so hard to do. Um, and like, you know, my business has done has done well over the years. And even even with it doing well, it still pained me for many, many years to replace trailers. But like you said, you know, I and, and I've said this many times and people look at me like I'm crazy when I say a trailer is a consumable. Right. And even more so when you have employees, because I've said it many a time, uh, you know, people are not as good a steward of your stuff as you are. So just go into it, understanding that when you turn the keys over to your equipment and your and your stuff, that it's not going to be as taken, you know, well taken care of. It is going to be rustier. It, people are not going to are not going to take care of it. But that's OK, as long as you understand it and understand that that trailer, as it's rusting away, is continually generating money. But but my point is, it's unbelievably hard still to say, you know what, that pressure washer is it. We're having a few issues with it. You know, there are some things that could go wrong. Um, but let's just go ahead and drop, you know, forty eight hundred dollars on a new eight gallon per minute machine and be done with it. And, and you know, I used to be like, oh, I'm going to keep that for a backup or I'm going to do this. No, I'm not. Now I have purged everything i want all the old shit gone mm. Mm. all of it's gone because i mm. i collected god and, and i did it mm. about a year ago i had an entire storage unit like a huge storage unit with there was probably four um v-twin motors uh there were probably 10 pumps a bunch of uh you know just you you name it old tanks uh just in, surface cleaners that that i was gonna maybe fix or we could use or you know yep. pull parts off of no longer you know yep. what happens we go and we replace it but we also have backups of everything because just what like what aaron was saying that catastrophic failure is not only a catastrophic failure of the equipment but it is a catastrophic failure of your business and your ability to make money because when your stuff goes down you have to stop what you're doing you have to go you have to tear out the old stuff put in the new stuff you're losing money and if you're not making if you're if you're not if, if you're in the pressure washing business and your equipment isn't working then you're not making money and what's the point so i encourage everybody to try to change that mindset to where you aren't afraid and it doesn't bother you to spend the money ahead of time. So you don't lose money when things do go South. Yeah. Right. That's, that's one thing that I am very passionate about. Aaron's been to the shop a bunch of times. Mike, you've been here once just, I think you've been here two or three times. Yep. This shop will be squared away. It will look like a world-class facility. 
And my guys, they don't understand it. I'm like, hey, throw that away. Throw it away. Trash. Burn it. Pallets. We got a guy here that comes. He's like, hey, I want to y'all. I want to come get them pallets. If y'all just stack them up, I'll come get them. Nope. Burning them. If you want to dig them out of that fire pit, you can. But I'm not looking at a stack of pallets upside my building for six days because here's what I know. One, it pisses me off. But two, when a customer comes here to drop $60,000 on a trailer and my yard looks like crap, the building looks like crap because I'm pack rat and stuff away, I could lose a sale. I have to, I've been to a bunch of pressure washing facilities. You know what they all look like? They look like pure hell. There's stuff everywhere because the average guy that is in this industry is thinking that way. And I'm like, no, nope, there's a dumpster and I will throw stuff in that dumpster that probably don't need Aaron and will throw something away now quick. But I probably go too far with it, honestly, because I'm like, I know that I'm like that. Like I've got that in me to be like, well, we might need it one day. No, I value the cleanliness, the museum like quality of the building that can produce multi-million dollar a year equipment rolls through here. And it, it looks like a world-class facility all the time. It's just, what do you value? And, and like Mike, you like, you're saying, it's difficult to do that until you start budgeting for those things. We've got a budget, right? You do a job, you make $2,000. You should put a little bitty bit of that into a maintenance account for parts. You should put a, a piece of that for marketing, right? Cause that's not a minor thing. That's a major but we're going to mind, we're going to major on these little tiny things and put a lot of focus on it. it it's just uh, it's not the way it is not the way to millions. I can tell you that for sure. I want to touch on this um, as well. <clears throat> Majoring in minor things. Um, so Aaron's got a great saying that I love and it's the quickest way to cash. And I think that's how everyone should operate. What are the actions that I can take that are going to get me the outcome that I want as quickly as possible? Right. So if you ever if you're ever struggling with majoring in minor things, that's a mindset that you guys can take. And that's something that I take every day. Every day, the actions that I have lined up are what are the quickest things that are going to get me cash as fast as possible because that is ultimately the, the desired result for a lot of us, right? Now, for me, when I started my pressure washing business, I probably should have focused on some of the miners a little bit more, right? I was like, okay, pressure washing makes money. My dad's got a pressure washer in the garage. Let me go grab that and go knock out some jobs real quick. I wasn't worried about what are the proper cleaning things, proper cleaning techniques that I need to be implementing. I didn't know what soft washing was. Like if you guys have seen uh, some of my earlier videos, a lot of them blew up because I didn't really know what I was doing. But I was just so into taking action, so into like how do I get to the cash as, quick, as quickly as possible that I really overlooked a lot of the things that – Maybe I should have been doing the correct way, but you know, they each have their faults. You obviously want to find balance between the two, but you don't get so caught up in the equipment that you're not worried about the marketing and you don't, you get so caught up in these little minutiae that you ultimately lose focus on what the end goal is. And that's to bring money into your business. And the same thing that happened with the YouTube channel, right? Like when I started my YouTube channel, I didn't do like, I did a ton of research on what worked on YouTube, but I saw who was doing well and I copied it. And I said, what's at, at the end of the day, what's, what's the end goal to get as many views as possible. So let's replicate success. And that's something that we talk a lot about here on the channel, but um, I completely agree. Majoring in minor things, definitely something that'll keep you broke for a long time. We'll segue into the next one. Uh, loves cheat codes. I think we all like cheat codes a little bit, but uh, Cody, you want to, you want to lead on this one? Yeah. It's like these things just feed into each other. You know, you, you're, they just lead into the next topic, but uh, taking pride in thinking you found a secret way to success, but not willing to acquiesce authority to those that have proven strategies is what Justin, what you just said. You looked at the successful channels and you emulated what they were doing to, you know, become a huge channel. Um, example, them looking at my notes, my secret fishing hole, you know, the mentality that why get rich quick? Uh, this is why the get rich quick mentality resonates with these these guys with this mentality. So it's like I've got a secret fishing hole and I know people like this. <laughs> they will go and throw a Christmas tree every year into the same area of a, a Lake Widawi, right? That's from our secret hole over, you know. Meanwhile, the professional bass fisherman has got a really nice boat and a fish finder and he goes, boom, I just caught a huge fish. But we're we simultaneously like the school of hard knocks, which is the next topic. I don't want to go too far into that one, but we like doing things the hard way, but we also sort of like, you know, the cheat code. We like the shortcut. Um, there's not a lot of shortcuts. There's ways to do it. And some of those are speedy. And then there's, there's you trying to circumvent the process. That's one of the things that drives me so freaking nuts. Had a guy last night called me. He messaged me on messenger. 
he he bought it, one of our skids, but he bought it from a second hand. He bought it used. So he didn't give me any money. Uh, I told him, I said, well, dude, that's fine. Like, I don't care. You know, it's a good deal. Buy it. It's in great shape. Uh, he's a local guy and he don't want to come to the class because he don't want to spend the money to come to my class. Roger that. I told him about how to wash. I told him about some of the courses, inner circle. Nope, 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 nope. So Wednesday night I'm at church and he's messaging me on messenger because he don't have my phone number. And he was like, Hey, I got a quick question. Well, guess what? You don't have access to me because you're not a customer. You're just like, you're wearing my hat, but <laughs> you bought the hat at the flea market, you know? So like his question was about Galvaloon and I, like, yeah, I gave him some pointers, you know, but I, you could go literally nuke Galvalume and get an insurance claim in your second month of soft washing because you bought a used skid to save three grand. And that's fine. That could be a calculated thing. But you're you're always trying to cheat code out. And I'm telling you guys, that's going to come up and bite you in the butt one day. I have a good example for this one. And I'm going to segue it over to Mike because he's the one who met the guy. Uh, but like loves cheat codes, right? Like. You know, somebody who watches our channel and soaks up all the information possible, but like when they have the opportunity to teach someone else, they don't want to give away the secrets. That's I kind of equate these two things together. Mike met a guy that um, he wanted to put on the channel. I think he had a wash business. He was in. He was passing out flyers in a in a uh, was it a parking lot, Mike? I think is what it was. Yeah. And he said, come on my channel and just share a couple things. You know, introduce yourself, say a couple things. And he's like, oh no, I don't want to do that. I'll, I'll actually let you tell it, Mike. So so tell about this guy. Yeah. So he, I, I was, I was going to the grocery store. I park, I'm walking in and he was, he had a truck and it was, it was wrapped. And, you know, I could tell, you know, as I got closer that it was like, you know, sort some sort of washing type of business. It had a different area code than, than where we live. Um, and so uh, I stopped and, and he looked at me and, and I guess, he, you know, he did, he recognized me and he was like, Oh my gosh. He goes, I watch, I, I, oops, sorry. I watched your channel all the time. And, um, I was like, Oh, uh, and I didn't pick up on what he had said. Um, and I was like, yeah, I said, so you're new in town. You've, and he's, or you visit whatever. And he was like, no, I just moved down here. I had some issues, uh, where I was living, divorce, this, that, the other, I moved up here. Um, he goes, I, I don't really do any pressure washing or soft washing. Cause my equipment is, you know, no longer there apparently, but I do, uh, sanding sealers and, or I do, you know, like paver sealing and, uh, sanding and stuff like that. And, and it's just such a, uh, you know, a great niche and, you know, down where I was in Florida, there was a tremendous amount of pavers everywhere. Not so much here. So he was dry. He said he was driving around different neighborhoods and just basically targeting those folks that had pavers, which is a good, you know, if you're brand new to an area, that's great. So um, I immediately perk up because I'm like, oh, this is something that I can take and I can share with everybody out watching about a, a niche service that you could add to your business to, to increase your sales, increase your average ticket price, you know, uh, add more value to your customers. And, um, and he was like, oh no, he goes, I've got some, some pretty special things that I do and I don't want to share my secrets with anybody. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, you just told me that you watched my channel and that you learned a lot from it, yet you don't want to help other people, even though I was helping you. And he said, yeah, I stopped watching your channel when you started selling your courses. And I thought, okay, I want well, to take away that into the next topic because I think those kind of go together too. But just like this is the person that we're talking about right here, right? Can soak up all the free knowledge, watch all the free videos, right? And then when they have an opportunity to shed light on a topic or to teach other people, they are, I don't want to give away the secrets. I can't give away the secrets, right? I think this kind of falls in line with loving the cheat codes, but never giving the cheat codes to anyone else to be successful. Right. Do hey, yeah. you want to touch on this a little bit? <laughs> 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 my bad mike i didn't mean to interrupt you, you no I'm, I'm done <laughs> well it's kind of a socialist mentality if you really think about it um it's kind of that like rules for thee not for me kind of thing um i want all the benefit no expenditure um you know if it's yours it's mine it's ours, right? For the good of the community, which is very interesting that, you know, most of the people who we talk to are very anti that, but that is, that's the idea behind the cheat code. It's a socialist mentality. It's, it's a, it's kind of always kind of trying to get it for free. Let me 
go in this side door here and not just swipe my credit card. And I'm going to tell you, like deliverance is through you swiping the card, writing the check. Um, but uh, I mean, you know, cheat codes are something that will always cheat you on the back end. That's for sure. I've, I've seen that numerous times. I see it all the time in my comment section. Uh, but yeah, I think you got to weed that out. You know, it's like um, my dad back in the day, we didn't tell anybody how we cleaned a roof. It was like family secret. Dad invented roof cleaning. Didn't tell anybody how we'd done it. Been doing it since 1985. Well, guess what? One of the key things that blew my company up was telling everybody online. My second top, nothing like Justin's channel, but my second most watched video is how to clean a roof, only followed by how to clean a driveway. Like the dude is not, he doesn't understand that maybe he's the, the Mac daddy of paver sealing and sanding and he could start a channel and he could get a brand and he could work on a formula and he could get a Kim and he could sell the Kim. But then, oh no, he would have to start <gasps> selling. Well, everything is selling. You're okay. You're okay when you're selling, right? If, if it's, it's just the other way around that you don't want anybody else to do it. You don't want us to make a living. You don't. But you're okay when you do it. So it's a it's a it's a disease, is what it is. It's it's a poor mentality. Right. So we'll segue into the next one, which is school of hard knocks. Right. Doesn't want to invest in education. Um, they they want to do everything the hard way. And also, I think school of hard knocks kind of goes with what we do, having like some type of um, feeling against us of like we're giving away the industry secrets, we're bringing away too many people in. Um, I don't know, just us selling things in general. People like this despise people who sell when in reality you should be selling, right? Like the guy didn't want to watch Mike anymore when he started selling, whenever there was information that wasn't free anymore. So socialists. Who, who wants to lead? Who wants to lead on this one? Socialist, bro. Well, okay, let me let me say this. Um, I was watching uh Joe Rogan's podcast. Elon Musk was on there and they were talking about Neuralink, right? So Neuralink is like the idea is so out there, right? It's basically like they're rewiring your brain, uh, able to give you like ultimate knowledge, uh, heal you, you know, keep you younger, like altering your DNA and stuff. Like it's insane. Wow. But to hear Elon talk about it, it's just, oh yeah, this, you know, we just go in and we'll do this and do this. And then you'll have like the highest IQ of ever, you know? And, and so- Talking about Neuralink. So when that becomes something that is actually available to the public, they will be able to charge whatever they could possibly want, right? The price for a Neuralink implant could be, it, it doesn't matter what it could be. And, and people will buy it. And, and the reason that they can charge whatever they want is because smart people, people that understand the value of what this is going to provide, people will make that investment in Neuralink and, and that will give them the ability to do whatever they want. They will be the smartest people in the world. They will be able to uh, 10X, 20X, 100X, whatever it is that they're doing because they're going to have that much more intelligence than everybody else. But it's that same mentality uh, where, where some people be like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to try that. I'm just going to do it the hard way. I'm just going to get out there and, and you know, work, work till I'm 90 and, uh, and, and whatever. But so like having seeing the value in the education, seeing the value in, in investing in yourself, in your business, that's what so many people lack, right? They just don't get it. And, and it's like, you're putting a little bit of money in, but you're going to get so much more out, right? But there's just, there's a, a mentality of people out there. There's a group of folks that just will refuse to admit that they don't know anything and that there are other people out there that can give them insight on how to do things better, more efficiently, make more money uh, in a quicker fashion. Uh, and they just, they, they just refuse to do it and shame on them. Right. Or not like that's less competition for us. So it's, it's, it's a sad, it's a sad state of mind. I'll give this you a, really, be, go okay, ahead. Okay. well, I got a really good example. I don't want to forget it. So when I was teaching Alyssa how to drive, Alyssa's 20, could be 21 this year. And, um, uh, I want my kids to be able to drive a straight shift, a stick shift vehicle, right? That's a, that's a skill that Americans should have. So everybody's like, you're going to teach her how to drive that stick first, ain't you? That's the way to do it. You learn the hard way, right? You, you learn how to drive that stick first. Now, like, eh, I'm like, nope, not going to do that because, number one, she's a girl. Number two, she's already scared. Number three, nobody in Randolph County uses a blinker. 
So why would I want to add another layer of difficulty to the process? Because we've got like a land cruiser with an automatic transmission. What's the goal? The goal is to teach Alyssa how to drive. OK, so we're going to learn how to drive in the simplest way possible in an open parking lot with an automatic. <gasps> You're doing it. the. But I thought we were about the school of hard knocks. No, I'm going to teach her. The goal is to get her to learn how to drive. Once she masters driving, then we'll bring back in that one element. So she's just learning the gearbox. Right. But there's no righteousness in the difficulty level of the process. You forgot what the goal was. The goal was it not for it to be difficult. The goal is to move the needle to this point, okay? So what moves the needle here the most efficient way, and that's what we're going to do. I'm not saying don't learn the skill, right? I'm, I don't know crap about marketing the way that Aaron does. I'm, I know enough to know that I don't know that, and I also know enough to know that I don't want to know that. But I bring in, I hire out a consultant, an Aaron, right? I don't know anything about Facebook ads. Justin, you remember like six months ago, I said, hey, Justin, Run me some Facebook ads because I ain't going to learn it. I don't want to learn it. But Justin don't know crap about equipment. I nor don't. does he need to or want to know. But Justin knows that. He's self-aware. So he liaises with a subject matter expert, right? And, and that we have that benefit because we're friends. But you're, the way you do it is you buy the course. You come to the training. Or, or you do it the hard way. Like you've got that option, dude. But don't. The thing is, is not to get romantic about the process. You should get romantic about the outcome. You see a lot of guys, I see that, you know, when you're talking about the school of hard knocks, I think awareness is the first, like Cody, you mentioned, he's self-aware and awareness is the first step to change in anything. Um, becoming aware uh, of the issue. Uh, and, and the cool thing about everyone who's watching this right now is now that you don't get to be unaware. See, now you've been made aware. See, you're welcome. <laughs> um, this is like the matrix. This is like what the, the red pill. This is exactly what that is. Now that you're aware, you can't run from yourself. So when you were a child, you what? Thought and acted like a child, right? But and that a lot of guys in business, when they're a child in their business, they're brand new in the game. They're just unaware of some of these things. So hard knocks is default setting. But yeah. once you watch some of these lives, you participate in the inner circle. Say you come to WashCon, literally, you know, you invest about a roof cleanings worth of money <laughs> in your small business. Commercial job. <laughs> a small commercial job in your business. The awareness that now is brought upon you is actually what, like they say, the truth will set you free. It, it, it makes it to where you now cannot run from yourself anymore. And now you're pitted. I always, I never really understood the devil and the, uh, angel on the shoulder thing but if you just take the devil and the angel away and just two opposing forces basically now you have that they basically place those two things on your shoulder and you don't just hear one voice anymore which is the school of hard knocks and if you ain't a stick shift it ain't real no 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 you hear the other one because you've been listening to the stuff you've come to the event you've you've steeped in it and now you have the other one say hey man you could just write the check you 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 got the money. Like you made two grand last week on one roof cleaning. You got four more lined up. I know you're brand new, but swipe the card. And this is where transformation really happens because the choice of either is where the transformation happens. And what we're trying to do here on this live is to get you to choose the new voice right? because it's easier because it's better, it's more fruitful, you'll live longer, you'll deal with less anxiety, you'll have higher self-esteem, and you'll make more money. And that's, I, I have to speak from just personal experience for myself, because like we said in the beginning of this live, we all have that other voice. But that's what you're born with, and you live with if you grew up where we grew up, and some of you guys grew up. That's the only voice. But now you start listening to this stuff, the school of hard knocks is now a choice. And you get to submit to yourself again and again and again. And it's not because we didn't tell you. It's because now you're just making a choice to do it the hard way. It's like a guy who says Footbridge Media is expensive. It's $199 a month. It's wow. $6 a day. You can't pay someone $6 an hour and hire them, Cody, can you? Right? Like you can't, you can't do that. That's, that's like impoverished. Like you can't pay someone $6 an hour to 
much less like you buy quote IQ, all the things that it does for you. You can't pay someone to sit in your office for what that's going to cost you per month. You can't pay them per day to do that. So this is where that school of hard knocks, you start leveraging it against itself and you start watching this teeter totter happen in your mind. And I want you to submit on this call to the new way of doing things. And the new way involves making more money. It involves happiness. It involves taking more trips with your family and actually enjoying life. Okay. Like that's what this whole thing is about. We talk about making money, but the, the, the funny thing is if, if we were still in the garden of Eden, we wouldn't need the damn money. Okay. But we do, we need money. So we need to try to amass as much as we can, but, and, and that's going to relieve probably a lot of marital problems. Okay. Which divorce, the number one cause of divorce is financial issues. Number one, bar none. Who's making the money? Who's making more? And a lot of guys who come to me, do we hear about it? Okay. We hear about that stuff. All of this new voice is going to lead you out of that. Maybe not today, maybe not next month. Maybe for me, it, it took a minimum of a year, two years. Like we always say in the inner circle, year two hits different. Year two in pressure washing after you've done what we're telling you to do, it hits different. It's not even a question anymore. We're batting 400. We're, we're Derek Jeter, okay, at the plate when it comes to guys who follow the formula. Yeah. And that's fun to be. It's a fun place for us to be at because we, we can see the guys who are literally taking the notes and we'll pick them out. We'll be in the group chat. And we'll be like, he's, he sees it, dude. He's got it. He's got it. He's doing the stuff. He's doing exactly. And come to find out a year and a half later, the dude's like, Hey man, I made $250,000 last year and we're going to do blank this year. Mike Terman's going to do a million dollars this year in his business. And it's like, it's just the implementation and trying to find a way to get away from the old voice. You, you we have placed the new voice on your other shoulder now and you cannot run from yourself. And this is a beautiful thing. It really is. It's transformational because now you got to listen to both. This is my favorite part about us being able to call in here and have these talks because we can broaden your guys' perspective. We can open your eyes to new things. And as Aaron mentioned, now you got a new voice. I want to bring up a concept, and essentially it's your life is a reflection back to you, right? So whatever feelings you get, whatever happens, it's just a reflection to you, right? So if you hate people who sell – how can you ever expect yourself to be a good salesperson to your customers, right? If you hate other people that have a lot of success, how can you ever expect to be successful yourself? If you hate people that make money, how can you ever expect to make money? Your life is just a big mirror to you. All we are is, is displaying you to yourself, right? So you need to be cognizant of that as well as you need to know that you attract not what you want, but what you are, okay? So how can you be cheap? How can you be the guy that's always trying to find the cheat code, that's not willing to give away the information, that's trying to keep everything for himself, trying to get the deal and attract wealth and attract abundance and attract your ideal customer? It's impossible. And that's why we come on here. That's why we share these things with you guys, because we want to align you with where we know you want to be, but you're not going to hear this anywhere else. And that's why I love coming together with these guys and talking about topics like this. And that's why we want to share with you guys the things that are going to keep you broke uh, forever. Um, you guys, have, we have a couple comments in here. I'd like to get to, I really like truth seekers comment. These are the kind of talks that we get every other week in the inner circle. Um, if you guys are interested in getting more of this, somebody asked about coaching, where can we get by the class? We have a resource page for classes. You guys could jump in the inner circle and get us, you know, having these conversations. We actually answer everyone's questions in the inner circle here. We can't cause we're just talking about topics, but I just love the ability for us to like minds to come together and open up other people's minds as well. Like minds going in a positive direction, like right. minds constantly challenging ourselves to write the check. Look, man, for me growing up, Cody, you got, well, you guys get it is that, you know, we already didn't have a ton of money. We were like middle class, pretty middle class, definitely not upper middle class at all. But like when I hit my wall in 2016, there were there were there was a long time of not only like just a, a lack of money or not much money. There was a deficit because of attorney bills. There was pressure. There was real like negative amounts right coming in. They're like, hey, you owe ten thousand dollars for air. 
<laughs> for talking, okay, for arguing in front of the court for you, um, which I will, I'd pay it again gladly. Um, but it, it, during that time, that amount of pressure for me was was something that I was kind of pushed back into the poor land. And I guess that's why I talk about it so much on the channel is that I had to make a decision to hear that other voice and to heed that other voice. What we're telling you guys today okay. is if you make that choice now, you can't unhear it. OK, I love that about it. I love that for myself, because when I get challenged that way and I can't unhear the message, um, it makes it to where I get to actually control my destiny. You're not unaware anymore. So now you actually, you're reading one of them, uh, when we were in like fourth grade, we read the Goosebumps books that you could like choose the ending, <laughs> you know, now go to page 72. Well, now you actually get to choose the ending of this story for you. And you're going to say tomorrow, you're going to be faced with a choice and you're going to say, am I going to make the choice that's going to keep me broke forever? Or am I going to make the choice that grows me into something that I want to be years from now? Aaron's Aaron's story is so powerful because I think about it like this sometimes with, you know, we're in the middle of the country here. Deer hunting is a big thing. People like to go hunting deer, white tailed deer is big here. So if your goal is to feed your family, we're going to pick up the 308 and drop one. If your goal is to have a hobby, you might go down the rabbit hole of primitive bow hunting, right? And you're all about the bow and the type of wood and the string and the, all the things, you know, if you're doing a compound bow, you got all like there's a whole billion dollar industry in bow hunting, the arrow and the broadhead and all you got so much stuff. You got to get within 35 yards and you're going to, but you're, you're taking a lot of risk that you may not bring home a deer for the, you know, 42 times you go out because it's, it's more of a hobby. But we're talking about as a business. Okay. And Aaron didn't have a choice. And we're just assuming that if you're following our channels, that you're serious. If this is a hobby for you, you're probably not going to really jive with a lot of stuff we put out because we're killers. We leave the cave, we kill, we bring it home. And that's what we're trying to, you know, show you guys how to do is like, Hey, we've been successful at this. I'm not going to hide it. I'm not going to bury the talents. I'm going to, I'm going to double the talents. And so I'm just like, Hey, this is the way to do it. We'll put a vortex optic on something and drop it at 250 yards. Cause it's much easier to do that. Cause the goal is to bring home a kill. And if that's what you're about, then this is the kind of place you need to be at. So good topic, guys. That was a great talk. Um, yeah, don't be a. I want to say one other thing before we wrap. Aqua had a, made a good point. What's funny is the people that have channels and make videos about how bad you guys are for the industry. And they're so consumed with the core four. Losers focus on winners instead of these people reaching out to collaborate with us and say, you know what, you guys are doing something great. You guys are garnering a lot of attention. So you must be offering a lot of value to a lot of people. What can we do together? What business moves can we make together? No, they don't. They're We've consumed. never got that call. There's no, you're not getting any calls. And then this guy says, haters are the worst. That is a lie. If you don't have haters, you are doing something wrong. So the fact that we have haters is a beautiful thing, but always, like I said, it's a reflection. We are a reflection of every single person that hates on us to themselves on why they aren't successful within their own business and their own life. And that is all them. It's not us. All we yeah. do is we do what we do. And uh, by them hating on us is right. But us let's, let's take doing. that even a step further to how that relates to your business, right? One of the things, and, and this goes back to what we were talking about, about focusing on the important things, focusing on the things that move the needle, what your competition is doing does not impact your business, right? You need to focus on you. You need to focus on your market, on, on the customers that you're trying to target. Because if you're worried about what everybody else is doing, that takes the focus and the attention away from your business and ultimately your success. So stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. Yes, you have to be aware of your market and the pricing and things like that. But who cares where what his Facebook ad says or what his bandit signs say or that he's doing this or he's doing that. It has zero impact. Focus on yourself first and, and that's what's going to serve you best. Cool. If you guys want more of this, you can check out the inner circle. On the inner circle, we're, we're a lot more tactical. Here we're kind of giving you guys some ethereal, some, some different ways of thinking about things. Um, so hop in the inner circle. You get all your questions answered. Also, if you guys want to go ahead and sign up for the VIP day, you can meet us in person at WashCon. Uh, we're going to be having the 
uh, WashCon live digital version available available very soon. We'll go live and, and let you guys know about that. But um, anyway, anybody got a word of the day for us today? Hmm. <laughs> Aaron hit him with it. The word of the day. <laughs> okay, the word of the, 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 word of the day one. is going to be a uh, tactical. I don't know. You got to get tactical if you want to be successful in your business. Like so it. comment that down below. Let's we'll go. hashtag your real one. Check out the links in the comment section description. Anything else, guys? That's it. Hustle hard and get that money, baby. Peace. Four out, baby. See you.